Many a times we refer to the tables to find out some data. Maybe various reasons that we don't have authorization to the transaction code or it is something that we can find only in the tables or sometimes we feel the table access is easier than navigating through the entire SPRO path or going to the transaction code. Many a times we also get the need to refer data from multiple tables. The better way that we do is we take the dump of these two tables, put a VLOOKUP in the Excel sheet and then get the combination of the data that we are actually looking for. But what if there is a way in SAP where we can directly put a join onto these tables and we can get the data from multiple tables in a single shot and this can be repetitively used multiple times like whenever we want to extract such kind of a combination data. So that is possible with SE16H in S4HANA and that is what we are going to look in today's video. Hey this is Abhiram and welcome back to my channel. If you are finding my videos useful then please do like those videos, share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and motivate me to post many such videos. If you want to contribute to my work then you can do it by clicking the join button and becoming a super member of the channel and in return you can also get access to my Udemy courses, discount coupons and also flat discounts on my live training sessions. And there are also member exclusive videos and other content which you can get by becoming a super member. And if you want to do a one-time contribution then hit the thanks button below any video on my channel and that will help me to create many such videos going forward. So let us jump into the video. So let us first try to understand a brief difference about SE16N and SE16H. By now we are all very much used to use the SE16N and no longer using SE16 because SE16N has advanced features. For example, if I want to see the table for GL accounts, I'll go to the table SKA1 and I can see this entire fields here. I can also select what all the fields that I can see in the output. This is all the advanced features that we have in SE16N and that's why we moved to it. Now let us go to the transaction SE16H. I'll open it side by side and we can see a few more differences between these two. So if you see this, there is a quite difference between SC16N and SC16H. First thing, yes, of course, we have all these fields available here. And we also have some selection criteria and we also have what all fields that we want to select in the output. But in addition to that, if you see here, we are also having various other options like we can put an aggregate on the tables. Like for example, if I want to put an aggregate on any amount field so that by default, when you are executing the table output, the system will show only the aggregates for that particular field. And if you want to sort it, we can all by default sort all these here. And if you want to group together few fields, so that is also possible. So there are various other features also in SC16H, which will make table browsing much more efficient than SC16N. And one more important feature that we are going to discuss today is the outer join definition. This is where we can put a join, a join in the sense we can connect more than one table and we can fetch data that is present in multiple tables in a single output. So let us see how we want. For that let us put a case. The case is that we want to see the output of the entire GL master data in a single output in SC16H. We know that GL master data is split into three different parts. One is the company code data, the other one is the charts of account data and from a table point of view there is also another table called SKAT which will actually hold the GL account texts. If you see here, SC16H is also providing by default the SKAT which is the text for the GL account and you can also have an option to put as no text where the system will not pick the text automatically from SKAT. So we know that SKA1 is a table for charts of account data and SKB1 is a table for company code data and we cannot see these together in a single table. So now the task is we want to combine these two and we want to see it in a single output and let us see how we want to do that. Before we go and understand how we can put a join onto different tables, let us first understand what are the different tables that we need and how we can logically link different fields from different tables. So we already discussed that the GL master data contains of three different data. One is the text, one is the company code data and other one is the charts of account data. So the first part is the company code data. And the second part is the charts of account data. And the third part is the text. Although SE16H directly gives the access of text, let us also take in our case that we want to link text from a different table. So this table is this SKB1 and this is SKA1 and this is present in SKAT. Now let us also briefly understand what are the different important fields that are present in each of these different tables. So let us go ahead with the first one which is SKB1. So under SKB1 what are the important fields we have? We have the GL account number which is nothing but SAKNR and we also have the company code 
which is nothing but BUKRS. So these are the two important fields that are required for us in order to put this join. And similarly, let us also understand in the SKA1 table. So this is SKA1 and here also we have GL account which is SAKNR and here we don't have the company code but we have the charts of account which is KTOPL. This is the technical field name. And here we have SKAT. SKAT, we have the GL account and we have the GL account text. Which we have both long text as well as we also have the short text. Now let us understand how we can map the different tables with the different fields that are present in these tables. So first one, we want to map SKB1 with SKA1. So that can be mapped to the common field which is our GL account. So SAKNR can be mapped with SAKNR in SKA1. So with this, if we are finding any GL account in SKB1, which is the company code section, then with the help of that GL number, we can also find that GL number in the SKA1 table, which is the charts of account data. But the problem here is, there can be a same GL account with the same number in two different company codes or two different charts of account which are not at all related to each other. So we need one more field which can help us that the GL account that is present in this company code is the same that we are getting in this charts of account. So that means we need to link the company code with the charts of account data. So for that we need another table which can help us to map SKB1 with SKA1 which is the company code with the charts of account and that is where we require this table called as T001. So T001 is a table that will help us to map the company code with the charts of account. So here we have both the charts of account which is the KTOPL and we also have the company code which is BUKRS. So what are we going to do is we are going to map this company code with this company code here and we are going to take the charts of account from here to this charts of account. So that is how we are going to map the company code in SKB1 with the charts of account in SKA1 so that we get the same GL account from both SKB1 as well as SKA1. So now we got both the company code section as well as the charts of account section of the GL master data. Let us also link this with the text. And in SKAT, we also have one more field, which is our charts of account. So here we also have charts of account, which is the KTOPL. So it is easy to map between SKA1 and SKAT. So we are going to map this GL account with the SAKNR here. And we are going to map the charts of account with the charts of account here. And with this, we are going to fetch the GL account text. So this is how we are logically going to link the different fields from different tables. So that whenever we are going to execute the output for the table SKB1, the system will automatically do this entire logic mapping in the background and it will show what all fields that we require from all these tables together in a single output. So every time we want to see the entire GL master from the table, we need not again download the dumps from SKB1, A1, SKAT and T001 and we need not do any VLOOKUP in the Excel sheet. This is a one-time setup and every time you can use the same join in SE16H whenever you go to the base table. So let us go back to SAP now and here we are going to do this one for SKB1 table. It is not that you need to always use SKB1, you can also use SKA1, it is just how you are going to define your join is what it refers. So to create a join, first we will go to the outer join definition, click on this and here we are going to put as GL master data and click on create. So what all the fields that we require here? So what all tables are we going to require here? One is already SKB1 is included, that is our base table. And the other one we require is SKA1, which is the charts of account data. And under the output of SKA1, we are going to require the charts of account. So we're going to see whether it is a balance sheet account or not, the group account number, whether it is a PNL type of statement, what is the account group. Let us also take it for whether it is marked for deletion, creation, posting and planning. And we'll also take what is the reconciliation account and execute it. Here we are having an option called as inner join. Inner join will define that it will show only those fields which are present in both the tables. For example, now we are putting a join between SKB1 and SKA1. There can be certain rows or certain data in SKB1 which is not present in SKA1. Then the system is not going to consider it if we are enabling the inner join. So by enabling inner join, I am going to take only that data that is mutually inclusive in both these two tables. So one more join that we require is the SK80, which is the text. So here also we are going to take the language and let us also take the short text and the long text. Executed. 
and here also I did not take any GL account number because that we are already taking it from the SKB1. Now the third table that we require is T001 which is the mapping we require between the company code and the charts of account. So here we are going to take what is the company code, the charts of account here and we are going to take what is the company code here. So this is the company code and click on execute. And here also we are going to enable the inner join. Now we have selected what all tables do we require for this entire join but now we need to put that logic of mapping the different fields in these different tables. So to do that first let us double click on this SKA1 which is the first table that we have taken. Once you double click it you can see SKA1 has been populated here and here is where we are going to map the fields between SKA1 and with the base table SKB1. So if we go back to our logic the mapping between SKA1 and SKB1 is SAKNR which is directly here and one more mapping of SA, SKA1 is with the T001 table which is the charts of account. So let us go back to and here we can see first thing let us enter it. First let us map the GL account which is SAKNR and here you always use the method as reference whenever we want to map it with the corresponding field in the different table. So let us enter the table which is SKB1 which is the base table and the field is SAKNR. And one more mapping that we require for this SKA1 is the charts of account. The charts of account is KTOPL and this KTOPL is present in the T001 table. So let us enter it as KTOPL. Now we have done the mapping for this SKA1. Now let us do it for SKA80. SKA80 we are going to map it with the GL account here. First thing is the SAKNR. And this we are going to map it from the base table SKB1. You can also do it from SKA1 because this field is present both in SKA1 as well as SKB1. And next we are going to do the charts of account mapping that we are going to do it with SKA1. So let us do the KTOPL and reference and the table is SKA1. You need not always enter the field. You can also do an F4 here. To do F4 on this part, first you need to enter the table, hit enter. Then you can do the F4 and here you can see the different fields. So the KTOPL is the charts of account here. So we have mapped our SK80 with the SKNR, the GL account from SK81. We did it from SKB1 but it does not make any difference. And the charts of account we have mapped from SK81. So now the one other table is T001. T001 we are used to link the GL account, company code and the charts of account. So the first one is company code which is BUKRS. So this company code in T001 we are going to link it with SKB1. BUKRS and another one is the charts of account which is KTOPL. The charts of account in T001 we are going to link it with the charts of account in SKA1. So if you see now we have done the mapping for all these three different tables with the base table SKB1. If we once again revisit our mapping what we did is we have linked the GL account in SKB1 to SKA1. The company code in SKB1 was the company code in T001. From T001 another mapping is the charts of account between T001 and SKA1. And SKA80 we have mapped the GL account and the charts of account with SKA1 or SKP1. So once we have done with the entire mapping we have done what is the output fields that we want to see and we have enabled the inner join. Click on execute. It will ask you whether you want to save this join or not. Click on yes. Now whenever you go to SE16H, enter this base table SKB1 and for this base table is what we have created this GL master data which is the join. Now select this join, you can still see what are the output fields and now I don't want to see all these outputs. What I am going to do is I am going to select only the company code, the GL account and I am going to select few other fields like what is the field status group, the house bank, the account ID. I am going to select whether it is automatic posting is allowed or not the account currency, the tax category, the, G the line item indicator and now let us put some selection criteria. I want to see all the GL accounts from my company code which is TSDL and let me execute it. Now if you see we have received and here we can see the system is showing the output from multiple tables. One is your company code which is the SKB1, the company code, the GL account 
And if you see the field status group, the currency, the house bank, account ID, all these are coming from your main table, which is the base table SKB1. And if you see the charts of account, this is coming from SKA1, which is linked through T001. And here you can see whether it is a balance sheet account or not, what is the group account, the tax category, the account group, the deletion indicator and all these. And you can also see the reconciliation. And the next one is T001. And the next field is the language, short text and long text. These are coming from SK80, which we have linked between SKA1, SKB1 and SK80 through the charts of account and the GL account number. So you can see this is a cash account, the long text, the short text, you can see here. If you see, we have also selected the additional fields from T001 where we have mapped from TSDL and TSL, which is the charts of account. So this is how we can join multiple tables. And now I need not do this entire join ever again. I just go to the transaction SE16H, select this SKB1 as my table, select the join and then execute it. And it will automatically give me this entire mapping of the fields. So you can do this join for any different tables. All that you need is to have an idea on what are the common fields between those two different tables and what is the output that you want to see from these two joins. So good luck on experimenting this with many multiple tables. You can the classic examples is to see the entire sales order data by mapping the sales order table, the billing document table, and there are various other use cases for this SA16H joins. Hope you have liked the video. Do not forget to like the video share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when I post a new video. See you in the next video and until then take care.